Thank you. We have time for a couple of questions. <laughs> Super. Thank you. A couple of questions. One in the back. Hi. Uh, thank you so much for this fantastic panel. My name is Summer Lopez. I'm with PEN America. And um, I'm thinking a bit about the panel we had yesterday as well about hateful content online. And uh, of course, we all know much of that is targeted to silence individuals of color and particularly reporters of color. So I'm, that's something we're thinking and working on. <clears throat> but I'm wondering how you're all thinking about that and addressing it in your work. Ay, Dios. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> so, I, I just went through an experience actually this weekend. Maybe I'll just use it as an example. Um, um, I, I'm not a contributor to MSNBC, but I'm often asked to be on. Um, so I, I'm not a paid contributor. It's an important distinction for me. Um, <clears throat> but I, I did happen to, um, when Nevada was happening, um, I did happen to throw a question out to uh, Bernie Sanders. Um, it was a journalistic question, but it was like, whoosh, and <clears throat> on Twitter. And, you know, I, I think what I tried to do is I was like, okay, so how am I going to, how am I going to use this and actually flip it and try to create dialogue so that, so that whatever is perceived as anything hateful, um, can somehow, I can model how to say, talk to me. I'm, I'm listening to you. Um, <clears throat> if you put words in my mouth and you misconstrue what I said, it's not going to be good. But I'm going to try to listen. So that's one way, a tiny way in which, <clears throat> and again, as we've been saying, and Martin is saying, a lot of this is just human to human, right? So I'm trying to model how we take a situation that could have just like <laughs> exploded and gotten really nasty and to try to, to revert it into something that I hope could model a little bit of, of being productive. And, and we have a, oh, oh sorry. And, and, and I was just gonna yeah. say, this notion of, <clears throat> this notion of hate is very real if you're a journalist of color. So, I like to make a joke, because I think laughter is also really important. So the joke is, is that I'm five things that this president doesn't like. I'm Mexican, I'm an immigrant, I'm a journalist, I'm a woman, and I'm flat-chested. <laughs> so, um, you know, so when people are like talking about feeling fear right now, it's okay. Um, <clears throat> you behave yourself. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, I'm like, hey, I wasn't born in this country. I wasn't born here. I became a citizen. And so I understand when people are talking about fear and how that fear looks. And I, every single day, have to just be like, it's good. I think a lot about Martin Luther King, and he rest in peace, and that it's just, it's good. It's good. This is all good. Nothing is going to happen. It's going to be positive. But at the same time, um, the piece that's coming up on Latino USA, I think, next week or the week after, we went to Milwaukee because um, a Peruvian-American citizen went to get a taco and some guy threw acid on his face, battery acid on his face. Um, and hate crimes against Latinos are the fastest growing, have surpassed now hate crimes against Muslims. So this is real. The hate is real. Our last question. Hello. First of all, great panel. Thank you so much. My name is Kyra Kyles, and I represent a nonprofit media organization called Wire Media, formerly Youth Radio. And my question is, you know, I've spent 20 years in journalism. I think one of the fixes that mainstream media has tried to offer up is fellowships, fellowships, fellowships. I know. And so what I'd like to hear from the panel is a meaningful way that we can make change within these mainstream newsrooms that are not hospitable um, so that we can end the, you know, fellowship apocalypse, as I would call it. Mm. <laughs> I think that's so well said. You know, fellowships are an interesting thing, right? Because uh, they seem like tremendous opportunity, especially the good paying ones that actually have benefits now, right? Uh, but what ends up happening with folks is that they're often the least senior and the tethered to often uh, grant funding that can be fleeting, because foundations have obviously a lot of priorities and there's a ton of need. and and they are, and so all of a sudden they, they, they create this, like, 
mirage of diversity because you have people that come in, they're doing great journalism, but they aren't in the C-suite. They're not making strategic decisions about the organization. They're not tethering things to revenue initiatives that are key, right? It's not connected to money. It's connected to content. But nevertheless, they're still incredibly important, and they provide great opportunities. I think what needs to really happen here is that there has to be a collective understanding that pipeline is key and that news organizations actually need to think of themselves as their own dare I say, farm system, that you need to grow your own from within with a plan to bring people from here to here, that they don't just come in, they're not transient, right? They are a part of a strategic, uh, uh, a po positive part of the strategic uh, goals of the organization. Uh, because fellowships, while they're wonderful, uh, they are not uh, a, a fix for the diversity problem that is facing these organizations. So I think one thing philanthropy could do is maybe creating a collective pool that funds uh, early on uh, a, a, a fellowship program that could be sort of almost for the entire sector, right? But I think for organizations that are larger, have revenue, that they need to actually think of a strategy around diversity. How does this align? They do this all the time with revenue initiatives. So how does the people, how does making people a part of your, uh, the hierarchy in the organization to go from junior to senior to leadership to heading it, how is that tethered to your most sustainable future? So it, it can't just be a program. It has to be about what the business, uh, uh, tethered to the success of the operation. And on that, um, thank you, Martin. I think um, when you put it also back to newsrooms to ensure that um, journalists of color don't have to be poor to continue on fellowship after fellowship um, to thrive and get a full-time paying salary job. Um, also, I think, Maria, Maria, to your point on addressing online hate speech, we also have to hold newsrooms accountable. Um, what can newsrooms do to protect <laughs> journalists who are targeted and create conditions of safety? It shouldn't just be on the journalist to handle it. Um, we need new systems and protocols to, um, to support journalists of color and ensure their safety and that they can thrive and do their best work. So I want to thank my well-esteemed panelists, Jeff Roda, Martin Reynolds, and Maria Inosa, and thank you all for sharing in this conversation with us.